So we've talked about how to think conceptually about how the gravitational potential energy of some mass in the presence of other masses is changing. Now, of course, we want to be able to calculate that out. Let's just think about a very simple situation where I have two masses, mass 1 and mass 2, and I'm going to move mass 2 and pull it farther away from mass 1. I know that that gravitational force, that the gravitational force acting on mass 2 is going to try and pull it back to the left because the gravitational force is always trying to pull those masses together. It's always attractive. So I can calculate out how the gravitational potential energy changes with this equation. So the change in the gravitational potential energy is equal to negative big G times mass 1 times mass 2 times this term in parentheses 1 over RF minus 1 over RI where these two R's, RI and RF, are distances. So RI is the initial distance between your masses, RF is the final distance between your masses. So one of the details to remember in using this equation is that our two distances here are always positive. So we have to make sure that when we're plugging in for RF and RI, we're always plugging in positive numbers. So let's make sure that this equation is consistent with conceptually what we knew had to happen in terms of the gravitational potential energy increasing or decreasing based on whether you're moving with or against the gravitational force. If our masses move towards each other, that means that the initial distance is greater than the final distance, right? They move closer, so that final distance separating your masses is smaller. Well, 1 over something smaller minus 1 over something bigger actually means that 1 over something smaller is the bigger term, minus 1 over something bigger is the smaller term, and so this expression in the parentheses is actually positive. So if it's positive inside the parentheses, times positive g times positive mass 1 times positive mass 2 you don't have anything to cancel out that minus sign, and so that tells you that the gravitational potential energy is decreasing. This means pushing your masses together decreases the potential energy. But of course that's consistent with what we said conceptually, which is that in pushing them together, they're moving in the direction the gravitational force is also pulling on them. So your masses are moving with the gravitational force, so we expect a decrease in the gravitational potential energy. That's exactly what our equation gives us. On the other hand, if I move my masses away from each other, so now the final distance is greater than the initial distance. So 1 over the final distance minus 1 over the initial distance is now something negative. So if it's a negative term inside the parentheses, gm1 and m2 are all positive, this negative in the parentheses will cancel out this one, and again I get that the gravitational potential energy is increasing. So by pulling your masses apart, we've increased the potential energy, but of course that's exactly what we expected, because in pulling them apart, we're moving our masses against the gravitational force. So this equation for calculating out how the gravitational potential energy is changing as I move one particle in the presence of another particle is consistent with our idea for moving with or against the gravitational force. Now, as with any potential energy, if you want to talk about the gravitational potential energy, what you really mean is the gravitational potential energy relative to the point where the gravitational potential energy equals zero. We never say all of that, but it's always what we mean, which means we have to identify a zero point here. And unlike in our constant gravitational field problem, here we don't have a choice. We're going to set the gravitational potential energy to be zero when our masses are infinitely far apart. So when we do that, it leaves us an equation that says you can calculate the gravitational potential energy for a mass, that that's going to be given by negative big G times the product of the masses over the distance between them. So R12 here is again the distance between masses 1 and 2. Big G, M1, M2, are always positive, which means the gravitational potential energy is never positive. The gravitational potential energy relative to the zero point is never positively valued. It can be zero when your masses are infinitely far apart, but for any finite distance, you're going to have a negatively valued gravitational potential energy. 
And in fact, the closer they get together, the more negative that gravitational potential energy is going to be. So some important points to think about when you're working with this equation. The first one is the gravitational potential energy is never positive. It's negative for finite distances. It's zero when the masses are infinitely far apart. What that means, of course, is that by increasing the gravitational potential energy as you move your masses apart, then the value of UG is simply becoming less negative. It's moving back towards zero. The gravitational potential energy depends on two masses, like the gravitational force. So we talked about two vector quantities, the gravitational force and the gravitational field. One of them depended on two masses. One of them depended on one. The gravitational potential energy depends on two masses, just like the gravitational force did. The gravitational potential energy is a scalar, not a vector. And again, we'll see how this matters in a second when we start talking about the net gravitational potential energy when you have multiple point masses. Again, R12 is defined to be a positive distance, but notice that the gravitational potential energy goes like 1 over R rather than 1 over R squared. So this equation looks very similar to the equation to calculate the magnitude of the gravitational force, but with two very important differences. One is there's a minus sign, which there wasn't in the magnitude of the force because that magnitude of a vector is always going to be positive. And the second is that our gravitational potential energy doesn't have a square on this distance. The gravitational force did. So if we do have multiple masses, and so you want to calculate the gravitational potential energy of one mass in the presence of several other masses. So in this case, let's calculate out the gravitational potential energy of mass 1. Well, we simply need to keep track of all the possible interactions. So the gravitational potential energy of mass 1, again, relative to our zero point, where mass 1 is infinitely far away from these other two masses, has two terms. One that's describing the interaction between mass 1 and mass 2. The other that's describing the interaction between mass 1 and mass 3. I'm going to calculate out both of those terms by using my equation negative g product of the masses over the distance between them. It's just I have a term for mass 1 and mass 2 and a term for mass 1 and mass 3. Once I've calculated those individual terms, all I need to do is add them together. But the fact that they're scalars, not vectors, is what makes this so much easier. So because the gravitational potential energy is a scalar, just adding it together simply means add together two numbers. If I want to talk about the gravitational potential energy for a complete system of multiple point masses, so instead of the gravitational potential energy of a single mass, now I want to think about the gravitational potential energy of this set of masses, I just need to include all the interactions. So I already had the interaction between mass 1 and mass 2 and mass 1 and mass 3, but I also need the gravitational interaction between mass 2 and mass 3. And so there are three terms if I want to calculate out the gravitational potential energy for the system. The gravitational potential energy between masses 1 and 2, between masses 1 and 3, between masses 2 and 3. And again, I calculate each of those out by negative big G product of masses over the distance and just add them up as scalars. What the gravitational potential energy of your system is telling you is the work required to build that system of masses. So you've stored some gravitational potential energy inside a system of masses that's going to equal the amount of work it took to build that system.